Years of accusations, decades of abuse, and one unprecedented investigation. In November 2009, Ireland's Murphy Report exposed the extent of one of the worst scandals ever to hit the Catholic Church. The report found the Archdiocese of Dublin covered up widespread sexual abuse of children. And instead of punishing the offenders, bishops protected paedophile priests by moving them from parish to parish and even sending them to the United States, all to conceal their secrets and sin. church here had such a grip on the people I think and a such respect for it was we went through seven eight hundred years of being ruled from Britain and they made it a criminal offense to be a Catholic you could be executed if you were a priest and the people just fought so hard to hold on to their religion and that's why, in a way, that we lost, I think, sight of, of the, uh, the bigger picture. Nothing has happened in this whole saga that hasn't been brought to the fore by victims. As a young child, I was, uh, I was very devoted to my church. In those days, everything was very black and white. Either you were going to go to heaven or you were going to go to burn in hell. Quite scary, really, to a small child. This picture here uh, was taken, I think, the day after my first communion. Uh, I was quite a skinny little thing. <laughs> um, this is just a, a sort of portrait my father was doing when I was about um, 11 or 12. It was just after I'd made my confirmation. I was taken into hospital to have a, an operation. And uh, I was really quite an ill child for, for two or three weeks. And uh, he came around. He was the chaplain. And uh, he came around to visit at the first day I was there. And he came into my room and said hello and chatted a little bit to me. And uh, was very friendly. I suppose as a child I thought of a priest something not quite human, you know, something a little bit above human, like that there was something uh, saintly about him. He would come about 10 o'clock, and uh, he used to read me from a book called The Secret Garden. It's about a little girl who has this key to this secret garden that nobody else knows about. Uh, so I think that was sort of part of the, the secrecy thing, you know, part of the manipulation. And then he would tell the nurse, night nurse, to go off and get a cup of tea for herself. Um, this picture here um, is the picture that uh, my abuser took um, in the hospital. Um, as you can see, I'm not looking too well. I'm not looking too happy either. He was actually um, guilty of digital rape. He, he did, um, he did, uh, he was invasive. Every time I told him what he was doing was wrong and I wanted him to stop, he would say, um, I'm a priest, I can't do anything wrong. Eventually, he took a very, very abusive photograph of me. And that was really, I think, the hardest part of the whole, the whole abuse. He, he came to hear my confession the day after he'd taken this photograph. I lay there and I thought, this awful thing that I had let happen, I've got to confess it. It's so, I, I've, been so, I've been so bad. And I thought, if I do, he'll be angry with me, he'll be upset, he'll be annoyed with me. And if I don't, you know, God's going to be annoyed with me. And I had this thing of... of offending God or offending this priest and the power he had over me really showed in the fact that I just said nothing I chose rather to have God angry with me 
I know it's very hard for people to understand, but that changed my whole view, my whole idea of myself. I started from that point to think I'm a really, really bad person. Mary Collins is a really very bad person and um, I've got to keep this secret. That really led to a lifetime of, of very severe depressions. For a, a child that everything was bright and everything was, was colourful and fun, the world had turned grey. I was uh, born and raised Roman Catholic. Everybody in my family is a descendant of Irish Roman Catholicism. I received my first assignment as a monk to follow in the footsteps of another monk and replace him that same day when he was pulled out because he had uh, sexually abused a child. All my assignments from that point forward were to follow troubles of different monks who had abused children. Yeah, I was a company man. My major role was to uh, smooth the waters and uh, to make as much of the scandal go away as possible. I had been hearing confessions for a number of years of diocesan clergy, so I knew that there was an ongoing problem and it wasn't going away. And I really couldn't do a whole lot about it. So that's when I left. That's when I left the monastery. That's when I left priesthood. Basically, the church will get a, a confidential report from either the parent, from a teacher, from the child themselves. And then they will tell that person, for the good name of the church, you must remain silent. And as an obedient Catholic, they remain silent. They eat the pain, they, they put it down, and they, they put it deep into their soul and make it go away. This one here is a happier one. Um, this is... Uh my husband and I on our wedding day, Ray and I. And, uh, 25 years after the abuse, um, I was sent to a psychoanalyst and um, he spoke to me about my childhood and whatever way he, he, he dealt with the sessions, the story of the abuse then did come out. And I went to my local uh, priest and I told him, I, I wanted to tell him that uh, I had been abused by the chaplain as a, as a child in hospital and uh, I wanted to give him the name so that he could pass it on to his superiors and make sure this man was taken out of position of trust with children. He turned round and said, um, oh well, uh, don't give me all the details because it was probably your fault. And then he followed that up by telling me I was forgiven. <laughs> it's just impossible to describe how the effect that had on me. I had spent 25 years thinking it was my fault. But I just felt like shattered and all the little pieces were falling down in a heap. It took another 10 years before I could bring myself to go back and report it again. Father Brendan Smith's case came up in the papers and that's, he was a very prolific paedophile here and in America. Uh, because often they, they, they didn't only send their abusing priests to other parishes, they sent them to other countries. Uh, but when his case came into the papers, somehow the realisation got through to me that this man could still be doing this, and it wasn't just me, that I had to go and try again. And I went and reported him to the Archbishop at the time, uh, Archbishop Desmond Connell, and I said, this man is an abuser, a child abuser. You've got to take him out of the parish where he has access to children. He said, you can't ruin his life. <laughs> he didn't care he'd ruin my life. Ru ruin 30 plus years of my life. 